An important aspect of observation-oriented modeling is the development of integrated models like the one shown on the screen here. Now, an integrated model is essentially a person-centered model that attempts to spell out the causes and the effects of a given psychological theory or a given psychological study or experiment. Now, consequently, it is distinct from variable-based models like the one shown on the screen here. Now, these models simply link variables together, showing how they are associated. Even a more complex model like this one is still a network of variables and their associations. Now, this model shows latent variables as circles and observed variables as boxes, but again, we only see networks of variables here. This model is not person-centered, and it's not comprised of varying structures and processes. Now, with an integrated model, we start with a person or persons, and then attempt to map out the structures and processes prescribed by the theory. Let's examine this particular model in detail, but first we need to briefly discuss the study from which it was derived. In this study by Shoda and colleagues, participants were asked to conduct a series of ratings on 50 or more consecutive days. Now each day the participant would think of a difficult situation and then rate the different feelings or fears experienced during that situation. The participant would also rate his or her daily stress level. Now here we see the integrated model for this study, and when constructing such a model, you begin with a person or persons. Now here we start with a person and a coworker. We could have included some other person, such as a friend or parent. But we also begin with what we will observe in our study, in this case, the various ratings. And our goal is to describe the causes and the effects, the structures and the processes, that generate or explain these observed ratings. Now much like a callout in a cartoon to describe what a character might be thinking, here we need a callout to describe what is happening internally within the participant. Now in terms of order of operations, the person is asked to first imagine a difficult situation with the other person. Now that complex rational process is represented by a pentagon in the model here, and the negative sign and the frowny face indicates that the interaction was in some way unpleasant or difficult. Now the person is also asked to consider how he felt during the interaction using the various rating scales. And here I have two of the feelings represented in the model, incompetence and frustrated. And the feelings themselves are represented by diamonds. And the pentagon shows that the person is asked to judge the presence or subjective magnitude of the feeling using the 0 to 10 rating scale. Now the FO here indicates a formal cause. And in this case, it's a matter of the participant judging feelings of incompetence as being a formal property of the difficult interaction. Now time is not important here, so it's not an efficient cause. It is a matter of judging whether or not these two things go together in some meaningful way. Now by comparison, time is important when considering the relationship between the feelings and the stress. The feeling rating comes first, and the feelings themselves are considered to be the cause of the stress. Hence the EF here indicates an efficient cause. Again, feelings come first, that leads to the stress, so time is an important consideration. The circle represents a simple act of predication, which is a simple act of putting oneself in a category. So for example, saying, I am stressed. Now the pentagon represents a more complex judgment since we've asked the participant here to rate the stress on a zero to 10 scale. Now everything in this call out represents the causes and the effects not directly observed by the researcher, but they're clearly inferred by the theory. The observable output, so to speak, are the feeling and stress ratings. Now the goal of the OM analysis will then be to determine, person by person, which of the feelings, if any of them, are causes of stress in the manner outlined by this integrated model. And here we see results for 53 days of consecutive ratings for one individual with regard to anxiety. Anxiety is represented by the red line in the graph, and stress is represented by the blue line in the graph. And you can see that they correspond quite closely across the 53 days, thus indicating that anxiety is a potential cause of stress for this individual. Integrated models, then, are person-centered causal models. They represent the various causes and effects prescribed by your theory or encapsulated in your experiment or study. Now, by comparison, these simple variable-based models are not person-centered, and they lack the complexity necessary to truly map out the structures and processes found in most psychological theories or studies.